This paper is based on ancient DNA that's taken from human remains from a series of Swahili towns, ancient Swahili towns, medieval period. The paper is based on a material from a number of different sites, and the, my contribution is a set of samples of ancient DNA that come from human remains that were excavated at a site that I've worked on for many years called Songam Nara, which is in, just off the coast of southern Tanzania. The ancient DNA world has been quite focused on studies of human origins in Africa, which of course is important. Africa is the cradle of humankind. Um, it's where our species emerged, but um, many African scholars are really interested in investigating questions about the much more recent past, right? Things that people uh, living on the Swahili coast today are really invested in and are really interested in, in hearing more about. And so that's things like the rise of these medieval cities um, and the, the powers that be in those cities. And to the to this day, we haven't really seen ancient DNA studies that have been able to address that. What's surprising about the findings that are reported in this paper are that up to about half of their genetic material is actually from uh, Persian ancestors. And what's interesting about this is that there's a long history to how we think about Swahili towns. And originally, people 50, 40 years ago, people thought that Swahili towns were the result of Persian colonists. But archaeologists like myself and others who are authors on this paper have worked really hard to actually explore and show how Swahili towns were in fact fundamentally African towns. These grow out of villages and larger towns in the first millennium and then become the sort of larger towns and cities that we see in the second millennium. So when we see this genetic code, the ancestors of these people were actually Persian and African, um, it, it helps us to start thinking about what types of um, relations were happening in these earlier towns. In general, I'd say in archaeology in the last few years, we've seen a real growth of interest in Indian Ocean connections, right? Sort of looking at the bigger picture of how new ideas and things and words and, and even people uh, are moving across the ocean space. This is not a story about uh, colonization, about Persian colonization. It's not a story about Persian men taking local women. It is actually likely a story about Swahili families strategically um, connecting themselves to Persian merchants and perhaps a father marrying a woman to a Persian merchant who they would bring into their house as they lived on the Swahili coast during the months when the trade was occurring.